Ah, the 1980s. What a time to be alive. Rocky IV, Van Halen, the looming threat of nuclear annihilation. The 80s had it all, baby. But one thing a lot of people don't talk about too much anymore is that the biggest scandal in American history happened in the 80s. And it involved a man who some consider to be the greatest American president, Ronald Reagan. And no, I'm not talking about the time he created AIDS to eradicate all the gay people. I'm talking about the Iran-Contra scandal. And I'm gonna get into it after a quick word from our sponsor. Guys, I have a confession to make. I'm kind of a schlemiel. I drop my phone at least 12 times a day. But luckily, I use Casetify, so it's still in one piece. Casetify makes these great looking phone cases that offer top-notch protection. In fact, they just came out with their most protective phone case ever. And I can sit here and tell you about it all day, or I can just show you. I'm so confident in this case that I'm just going to go ahead and drop my phone. All right, here's my phone. As you can see, uh, it's already cracked from years of not having a case on it. But uh, now I have a case, so I can just, you know, I can just drop it whenever I want. Look at that. Unfazed. Unfazed. That was like an eight foot drop. On top of the protection, Case Defy has hundreds of cool designs to choose from from a bunch of different artists. And they even have custom designs. They sent me like four different cases and they're all pretty cool, but I especially like this astronaut themed one that I have on my own phone. It's also nice that they're not super bulky like other phone cases I've had. Oh, and I almost forgot. They're made of 65% recycled material, because who doesn't love sustainability? If you want a delicious new phone case, go to casetify.com slash Dantavius and save 15% off your order. That's casetify.com slash Dantavius for 15% off. You'll be helping your phone, you'll be helping the planet, and most importantly, you'll be helping the channel. Thank you to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Our story starts back in 1951. Mohammad Mossadegh was just elected Prime Minister of Iran. He was extremely popular and loved by most Iranians. But you know who didn't love him? The British. See, most of Iran's oil at the time was owned by British Petroleum, aka BP, and Mossadegh decided that he was gonna nationalize all the oil. And if you know anything about England, you know they hate two things. Food that doesn't taste like ass, and losing access to oil. So the UK convinced the United States that Iran was in need of some good old fashioned freedom. And on August 19th, 1953, Mohammad Mossadegh was ousted by CIA backed coup and replaced with the Shah of Iran, who was more in line with Western interests. And things were going pretty good for him until 1979, but we'll come back to that later. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, in Nicaragua, a group known as the Sandinistas were fighting to overthrow the US-backed dictator Anastasio Somoza. And on July 17th, 1979, they succeeded and took control of the government. Now, the Sandinistas were socialists backed by Cuba. And let's just say Ronald Reagan wasn't too happy about that. The Sandinista rule is a communist reign of terror. Many of those who fought alongside the Sandinistas saw their revolution betrayed. They were denied power in the new government. Some were imprisoned, others exiled. Thousands who fought with the Sandinistas have taken up arms against them and are now called the Contras. They are freedom fighters. That brings us to the Contra part of the Iran-Contra scandal. The Contras were a collection of right-wing paramilitary groups that opposed the Sandinista government. And Reagan had a huge boner for these guys. At one point, he even said that they were, quote, the moral equivalent of the Founding Fathers. Now, I should probably mention that the Contras were accused of pretty much every human rights abuse imaginable. Kidnapping, torture, rape, killing civilians. These guys were doing it all. So yeah, they're not exactly fucking Ben Franklin's over here. And don't get me wrong, the Sandinistas were no angels themselves, but the thing with the Contras is that they didn't really have any oversight, so nobody held them accountable when they did messed up stuff. But hey man, at least they weren't a bunch of filthy commies. So the US sent them tens of millions of dollars of aid every year. But Congress thought that Reagan and the CIA were going a little too hard in Nicaragua, so they passed the Bolin Amendment in 1983, which completely cut off all funds to the Contras and prohibited the CIA from carrying out any operations there. But Reagan wasn't gonna let a stupid little thing like Congress stop him from helping out the Contras. 
But of course, he couldn't do it by himself. So Reagan started looking for somebody that could help out the Contras under Congress's nose. And it wouldn't be long before he found the perfect guy. Congress stopped the Contra money flow Just cause they moved a teeny bit of blow But then a hero came forth His name was Oliver North He and Reagan went around the sissy Congress Holly North Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North was a decorated Marine with more medals than the fucking periodic table. You might recognize him from Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Lieutenant Colonel North, NSC. He was the perfect guy for the job. He had experience, he was a patriot, and most importantly, he knew how to keep his mouth shut. And our boy Ollie didn't waste any time getting to work. The first thing he did was set up these secret fundraisers where rich people could donate money to the cause. And one of the biggest donors at these things was actually Saudi Arabia, who gave over 30 million dollars. So they were doing these fundraisers for a while and now they had all this money. The only problem was they didn't know how they were going to buy weapons with the money without Congress knowing. That's where Richard Secord comes in. Secord was an Air Force general who had a side hustle working in the black market arms trade. One of the guys who he worked with was a fella by the name of Edwin Wilson, who was pretty much the biggest arms dealer in the world at the time. And Secord acted as a kind of middleman between Wilson and Ollie North. Well, that is until Wilson fucked around and got himself thrown into prison after he got caught selling 40 tons of explosives to Libya. As one does. When it was discovered that Secord had been working with Wilson, he was forced to retire from the Air Force. But he didn't really give a shit. Now that he had a lot more free time on his hands, he decided to start his own arms smuggling company called The Enterprise. So Secord went from being the middleman to running the whole operation in just a few short years. And you know that mother sucker was getting paid. So, the Shah of Iran took power in 1953 after a US backed coup, as I said. And he actually did a lot of good stuff after taking over. He grew the economy, he helped modernize the country, but at the same time, he was also kind of a schmuck. He ruled with an iron fist, and while he did bring in a lot of wealth into Iran, most of it went into his pockets. I mean, the man literally threw a $400 million party for himself and his rich friends. A lot of people saw the Shah as a puppet of the United States who sold out his country to foreigners. And eventually the people had enough and a revolution broke out that brought down his regime. In 1979, the Shah left Iran and Ayatollah Khomeini took his place as supreme leader. Unlike the Shah, this guy didn't really like America very much. He referred to the US as the Great Satan. And one of his favorite catchphrases was, death to America. Now, you're probably thinking, man, it would be really dumb if we sold weapons to this guy. Yeah, probably, but we still did it anyways. See, back in the 80s, Islamic extremists had this weird hobby of kidnapping Americans and holding them hostage. Hezbollah, a Lebanese terrorist organization with ties to Iran, was holding seven hostages back in 1984. And Reagan really wanted to get them out, but he didn't really know how. And then one day, Ali North gets a call from a dude named Manusher Gorbanifar, who had connections to the Iranian government. My friend, my friend, I can get some of the hostages out. If you just do me a little favor and sell some missiles to Iran. This was exactly the opportunity that Reagan was looking for. But there were two issues. One, there was an arms embargo on Iran. And two, Reagan had a very strict we don't negotiate with terrorists policy. Our government has a firm policy not to capitulate to terrorist demands. But then Ronnie thought to himself, okay, maybe just this one time, maybe just this once we'll negotiate with terrorists. Just a little bit. So he told Ollie North to set the deal up. But obviously, if anybody found out about this, they would be in deep shit. So they had to get creative. That's when Bob McFarlane, Reagan's national security advisor, came up with a brilliant idea. They could just use Israel as a middleman. Israel would sell arms to Iran, and the US would sell weapons back to Israel to replace whatever they sold. And if they got caught, they could just blame it on the Jews, because that always works. It was a genius plan, but why would Israel ever get on board with something like this? Like, Iran had publicly called for Israel's destruction multiple times. Well, Iran was fighting a war with Iraq at the time, so the Israelis figured if their two biggest enemies were focusing on each other, they would be less focused on them. So it was a win-win. Everybody was winning. Well, except for the civilians getting annihilated by all these wars. But hey, they were brown, so who gives a shit about them? So Ali calls up Gorbanifar and tells him it's a go. 
Now, I should mention this Gorbanifar guy is a complete putz. Like, he is the stereotypical Persian arms dealer. Reagan called him a devious character, and Bob McFarlane said he was, quote, one of the most despicable people I have ever met. According to the National Security Archive, Gorbanifar was almost universally discredited for misrepresenting all sides' goals and interests. Even before the Iran deals got underway, the CIA had ruled Gorbanifar off limits for purveying bad information to U.S. intelligence. Okay, so this guy was so bad that the fucking CIA refused to work with him. And Ollie North was like, nah, he's a good guy. So Gorbanifar set up the deal, and to everybody's surprise, it actually worked out. And Hezbollah released some of the hostages. In fact, it was going so well that they decided to cut Israel out of the operation completely. And the new system worked like this. The Department of Defense would sell missiles to the CIA. The CIA then sold those missiles to Richard Secord, who would sell them to Gorbanifar, who sold them to Iran, at a massive markup, of course. Secord and Gorbanifar was making so much money off this scheme that they didn't even know what to do with it all. So they decided, hey, let's toss some of this cash to the Contras. And that's where the Iran and the Contra finally meet. Wow, it, it took us a while to get here, but here we are. Now, on top of getting money from weapons deals and donations from the Saudi government, the Contra's biggest source of fund was actually some good old-fashioned drug trafficking. So, back in the day, there was this guy in Los Angeles named Rick Ross. No, not that Rick Ross. I'm talking about the real Rick Ross. The biggest drug dealer in America. At his peak, Rick was pulling in over $3 million a day. He made billions of dollars on the coke trade. That's billions with a b b b b b Rick's supplier was a guy by the name of Oscar Danilo Blandon. And guess where he was from? Nicaragua. It turns out that Blandon was trafficking drugs to raise money for the Contras. And the Reagan administration knew about it the whole time. So while thousands of people were being thrown into jail for drugs, our own allies were bringing tons of stuff into the country while the government turned a blind eye. Where do you get your coke from? I was getting my coke from a guy by the name of Oscar Danilo Blandon. Blandon would bring me drugs to sell to raise money for the Contras. Uh, the Contras was backed by the CIA. They felt that if they lost Nicaragua, that um, Russia would be marching down the streets of the United States. Despite the destruction of the inner cities, the whole Iran-Contra operation was going strong. The Contras were getting their money, Iran was getting their missiles, and most importantly, everybody kept their mouths shut. For a while. October 5th, 1986, a cargo plane was shot down in Nicaragua. It was holding AK-47s, rocket launchers, grenades, and 200,000 rounds of ammunition. Four people were on board, but only one survived. Guy by the name of Gene Hussenfuss, who for some reason was the only guy who thought to bring a parachute. Now, Gene was pretty low on the totem pole, so he didn't know much about the operation. But what he did know was enough to link the plane back to the Reagan administration. And just when you think it couldn't get any worse, it got worse. November 3rd, 1986, just a month after Hussenfuss's plane got shut down, Ashira, a Lebanese newspaper, reported that the U.S. government was trading arms for hostages after getting a tip from an Iranian official. What's funny is that it's been speculated that Gorbanifar convinced the source to leak this story because dude was just an agent of chaos. Either way, the whole operation was exposed and everybody involved was fucked. The American people wanted blood. They wanted justice. So, Reagan created the Tower Commission, a special review board that was going to investigate the scandal and get to the bottom of the whole thing. So, just to reiterate, the president opened up an investigation into the president. And I appointed a special review board, the Tower Board, which took on the chore of pulling the truth together for me and getting to the bottom of things. But, obviously, Reagan wasn't going to take the blame himself, so Ollie North volunteered to be the fall guy. And... In some way, he was always intended to be the fall guy, right from the get-go. Luckily, right after shit hit the fan, Ollie North decided to throw a little party. A shredding party. Ollie and his secretary got together and destroyed every single piece of evidence related to Iran-Contra. Also, he was definitely hitting that. I shredded. I was never told not to shred. I shredded because I thought it was the right thing to do. When I didn't have a shredder, I put it in a burn bag and they were burned. So the official story was that Oliver North went rogue and did all this stuff behind the president's back with some help from a few other people in the government. For this, he was convicted of obstructing justice, destroying documents, and accepting bribes, for which he served a total of zero days in prison. 
because he got off on a technicality. But again, he didn't do all this by himself, so what happened to the rest of the gang? Richard Secord and his business partner, Albert Hakim, each got two years. Probation. General, what effect do you believe that these highly publicized proceedings will have on the willingness of foreign countries and individuals to cooperate with the United States on proper covert operations in the future? In my opinion, the whole world is laughing at us. The Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, National Security Advisor, and two CIA members were all pardoned by George Bush Sr. once he got into office. So pretty much everyone involved got off with a slap on the wrist at worst. Oh, actually, that's not true. There was one person who got punished pretty badly. Mehdi Hashemi, the guy who leaked the Iran arms sale story to the Lebanese press, he was executed for treason. But yeah, this was basically the biggest scandal in American history, and everyone got away with it. And nobody gives a shit to this day. I don't hear anybody talking about this anymore. You have all these conspiracy theories coming out recently, but then you have real conspiracies that are now declassified, that are right in front of our eyes, and, and nobody seems to care. I wonder why.